Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this Kaiweets Smart Digital Multimeter. So this is model KM312B. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. Okay, so here we have the meter. We have the leads, the manual, and some batteries. It takes two AAA batteries. Let's put the batteries in. They go in the back here. I'll loosen this screw. Okay, there we go. There's a little bit of plastic here I want to peel off. And here's the meter. It fits in your hand really easily. Here is an iPhone 6, so you can see the size in comparison. So the neat feature of this meter is it has an auto smart mode on it. So you can just connect this up to what you're testing and it will figure out what you're trying to do. So let's take a quick look at the manual. So there's safety information. So you do want to read through this manual and make sure you follow the safety instructions. Here are the different parts of this. It has indicator light, display, buttons, jacks, flashlight, and the non-contact voltage detection sensor. Here's the different buttons. To turn it on or off, you hold down power for two seconds. This has an LCD display that has a backlight on it. So you can press the light button to turn that on, or you can hold it down for two seconds to turn on the flashlight because this does have an integrated flashlight. It has a hold button, has a function button. So this has the smart mode, but you can also go into kind of the manual mode. And this is also auto ranging. And here are the different features. We have AC voltage, audible continuity test, capacitance test, double insulated, DC voltage, diode test, live wire detection, low battery, resistance test, frequency test, non-contact voltage detection, and this talks about how to use it. And here are the specs. The display counts as 4,000. It's powered by the two AAA batteries. Sampling speed is three times per second. Environmental conditions is CAT3600 volts. Pollution level is two. Altitude is less than 2,000 meters. Working temperature is zero to 40 C. And less than 80% relative humidity. Less than 10 degrees C non-condensing. Storage temperature is minus 10 to 60 degrees C. Less than 70% relative humidity. Remove the battery. Temperature coefficient is 0.1x accuracy per degree Celsius. Max voltage between terminals and ground is six volts. And here we have the accuracy specifications. You can read through those. And here's the resistance and capacitance and frequency. And then it has maintenance and warranty. So let's test this out. Here we have the leads. I'll pull these plugs out of the ends and those plug into the bottom here. Black for calm, red for input. So the ends of these leads are pretty sharp here and this will slip off like so. So that changes the CAT rating on these. So with the sleeve on, it's CAT 3 600 volts, and with it off, it's CAT 2 600 volts. So I'm not going to be dealing with any high voltage, so I'll just take those off. So let's test this out. I have a battery here, a touch to the sides of the battery, and we got 1.604 volts. So here we see we have the voltage, and then above it, we have a little graph of the volts. And you can see on the selector here, it knows that we're measuring DC volts. Let's get some AC here. And I wouldn't recommend sticking probes and outlets if you're not familiar with the dangers involved but I feel pretty comfortable with it. So let's stick this in here. And here we have 122.1 volts. It's kind of changing a little bit. Now, if I go to function here, I can press this and manually go to different modes. So I'll go to Hertz and let's measure the frequency of this. And here we're getting 60.2 Hertz. So if I want to go out of the manual mode, I can hold this down for two seconds, the function button, or I can just select through all of the functions. So next let's go to non-contact voltage. And if I go up to this AC line here, there's a detector. I'll hold that up against the wire and it says it's hot. So that's really handy. After you turn off a circuit, you can test it with that to make sure there's no electricity. Now with a non-contact voltage detector, you typically want to test it with a known good power source to make sure it's actually triggered and then test it on the wire you're trying to test. So let's test some of the other features. So I don't have a precision calibrated set to test this on, but I do have this old hobby kit from the 80s. So let's test some things. We have resistors here. This is 120 ohms. Let me get that out of the glare. I'll turn the light off. So 120 ohms. So we've got 120 ohms. 690, that's supposed to be 680. And these aren't high precision resistors, obviously. So here's 2.2K, 5.6K. Then we have 100K. 33K, 100K, and 470K. So you can see on the 470K, it actually switched to mega ohms. So we're 0.476 mega ohms. So it does have auto ranging on it. And if you didn't see that, that's on the bottom, right under where it says auto. I'll measure this, you can see that again. So that had an M down there, and this one will have a K for thousand. 
And of course, like this one didn't have anything. So those are resistors. Let's try a capacitor. Here's a thousand. So yeah, I'll have to hold it down onto this for a while. Okay, so this is measuring this as a resistor. So I think what we need to do here is go to the capacitor function. There we go. Now let's try this again. Now hold it down. Should have a measurement here in a second. And we're at 0.836. So hopefully you read the directions. It did say to discharge these. Now this has been sitting in a box for decades, so it shouldn't have any voltage on it, but you'd want to discharge it properly before you measure. So let's do the 10 now, see what we get. And the larger it is, the longer it could take to test. So this is 11.86, and this is a 0 0.022. We got 17.88. So if you're working on electronics and you want to test capacitors to see if they're good, you can use this meter. That's a nice feature. Next, let's go to diode test. And here we have a diode. Let's test that. Looks like we have 0.28 volts. Let's go the other way. And we have zero. So you want to test those both directions. You want voltage one direction but you do not want voltage the other direction. So that diode appears to be good. Of course, we also have continuity test. So if I hold these down with each other, let me go to the smart mode. If I hold these down, we have continuity, and you can just switch manually to that mode also. So that seems a little bit faster if I actually switch to the mode. So if you're in smart mode, you can use continuity, but if you're doing a lot of continuity, it's probably best if you just switch to the continuity mode. So I'm going to turn off the light so we can test out the backlight. So I'll press this button once to turn on the backlight. So you can see that's very visible. So when you're looking at viewing angle, if I go side to side with this, I can read this very well, but if I tip it up and down, it gets to a point where it kind of blanks out and I can't see it as well. So that's something to keep in mind. That may not work for some people, but for me, I'll just turn this 90 degrees. Like, if I'm reading this from above at a weird angle, I'll just make sure I can read it before I measure what I'm measuring. But it's a pretty steep angle you get to where you can't read it. So I'll turn that light off and now I'll turn on, I'll hold that down for the flashlight. So this is the flashlight here. So if you're in a dark area, this would be good for checking components, reading serial numbers, looking at part numbers, things like that. And nice thing is it's a flashlight built right into here. So you just have it with you. So I think that's a very handy feature. A lot of times when you're using a meter, you'll be testing a part on a furnace or a appliance or something, and it's kind of dark. And yeah, you can get a flashlight out, but if you only need a flashlight to say read a part number or something, you can just hit the button on here, you have your flashlight ready to go, and it'll do the job. Now you're obviously not gonna light a whole work area with this, but that's not the purpose of that light. I really like the backlight too, for the same reason. You're working in a dark area, you turn that on, and it's really easy to see. So I think this is a great meter for a beginner. It has the basic functions of a multimeter, like the voltage and resistance, but it has some other features on it too, like like capacitance and diodes. So if you're getting into electronics, those are very handy features. I like the auto mode. If you're working on something like with electronics, you can measure a resistor and then measure voltage without touching the meter. This also has great home water features like the non-contact voltage detection. So if you're working on circuitry in a house, you can check to see if there's voltage at a circuit. Due to this small size, this would easily fit into a work bag, a pouch. You could leave this in your car, portable toolbox or tool bag. This would be great for an RV. You could use this to test voltage wiring or wiring inside of the RV or on your car. I think that would be very nice too. So what this meter doesn't have is current testing. So if that's a need for you, this meter is not going to meet your needs, but a lot of things don't need current testing. Like when I work on automotive things, there's been a time or two I've needed current testing, but I'm almost always just measuring voltage. I want to see if voltage is going through to a certain wire, but a person will have to look at their own needs to determine if that's good for them or not. So that's the Kiwitz KM312B Smart Digital Multimeter. That's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.